Okay, science time. Today we are talking about Newton's laws. Newton's laws of motion. And do you remember that we, we talked about these a little bit um, already last time? Do you remember that? Mason remembers. Yeah. Aiden remembers. Joe remembers. Yeah. We talked, what we did was last time, as we were talking about forces in general, because that was the topic of lesson two. Um, we kind of, I went through and highlighted some of the things after we talked about them of Newton's laws. And so I want you to remind me, what was, what was Newton's first law of motion? I'll give you a sentence frame. Are you ready? Newton's first law is an object. Now you fill in the rest. An object, Joe. Yes, that's not, that's not, just let the record show the Newton's first law is not an object. May I sharpen my pencil? An object, what? What's the next couple words? At. An object at, okay. An object in motion is another way we can start that. An object in motion tends to stay in motion. And an object at, I think you're just missing this one little word here. An object at, what's it doing if it's not in motion? Staying still. There's a this, the word that Newton at least well he wrote it in Latin, but the Latin word that he used for that was an object at. Let's do hangman. S. You got it, Aiden. You got the very last letter. Nice job. Yeah, um, you guys should be on Wheel of Fortune someday. An object in motion tends to stay in motion, and an object at rest tends to stay at rest. Now you know the rest. I know you do. There we go. Unless acted on by an. You said a different force. I'm going to put force for sure. Outside force. Outside force is actually what it says. Yeah, once again in, in the Latin. But we, I'm going to, I'm going to point out that it must be what because we remember we talked about um, when I have I've drawn this picture on the board several times, but I have my marker here. Right here's the. Here's the marker. Give me one second, Tristan. There's the marker. Are there forces acting on this marker right now as I hold it? Is this object in motion or at rest? rest. It's at rest, but are there forces acting on it? Yes. So it can't be true that it's unless acted on by any force, right? Because there are forces acting on it. What forces are acting on this marker? Gravity. We call that F sub G acting downward. And then we have, as Mason correctly points out, F sub F friction acting upward. And you remember this diagram from last time. So these forces then are what we said. This was from the last lesson. These two forces are opposites. Okay, they're opposite. Are they? Because look at them. You're, you're, you're the opposite of right. They are balanced. So in order for this object to move or to change its motion more correctly, in order for it to change its motion, I'm going to cap it. In order for it to change its motion, there must be an, now say it, a what kind of force must act to change its motion? Unbalanced. There we go. Very good. Okay, so this is Newton's first law. An object in motion tends to stay in motion, and an object at rest tends to stay at rest unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Acted. Let me rewrite it for you. I know I have this problem here, Tristan. Um, acted. Is that better? Yeah. Can you see it okay, Tristan? Because you don't usually sit there. You can see this okay? I mean, I'm not asking, is the handwriting good? So don't get me wrong. Th okay, once again, I'm not asking that, but thanks for reminding me. Um, but you can generally read. I'm doing my best, Doug. I know we all, we all do our best in here. An object in motion tends to stay in motion, and an object at rest tends to stay at rest unless acted on by an unbalanced force. So back to this diagram. With Now I put the lid on it so that it doesn't damage its tip. But when I do drop it, when I drop it, how do these forces become unbalanced? What am I doing here? What about this diagram changes when I do drop it? Okay, in what way? Yeah, get rid of this. So now, now these forces, instead of balancing, like we talked about in the last lesson, these forces now are unbalanced, and that causes a change in motion. Let me, let me rephrase this in a way that'll be, I think, a little bit easier. Unbalanced forces, unbalanced forces, always, 100% of the time, in every single observation in the entire universe, unbalanced forces always cause 
a change in motion. Remind me, we defined this about a month ago, but remind me, what is the definition of motion? It doesn't have to be fancy. What? When something moves. Yep, that's exactly right. When something moves. And we're not just talking about any movement. We're talking about a change in movement. So, an object that is at rest, is its motion changing? No. An object that is moving, hopefully, at a straight line at a constant speed, is its motion changing? No. In this case, it did kind of slow down, but is slowing down a change in motion? Yeah. Is slowing down a change in motion? Yeah. And so, what, fo what unbalanced force caused this motion to change? Friction. friction. Imagine if this surface were frictionless, which we talked about the lesson before last, what would happen? It keep going forever. I mean, if this if this has a, if we had an infinite frictionless surface, the marker would move infinitely in a straight line at a constant speed forever. And so, in both of those cases, stopped and straight line constant speed forever. There's no change in motion. You remember what do we call this? Is from your explorations that you've hopefully completed. What do we call a change in motion? There's a vocab word for it. What do we call a change in motion? This starts with an A. There you go. Acceleration. So an unbalanced force always causes an acceleration, which happily leads us to Newton's second law. Let's, do you mind, does everyone have Newton's first law written down? Yeah. Okay. Does anyone, I should say, does anyone not have it written down? Okay, good. So we're going to move on to Newton's second law, which tells us, Newton's second law tells us that every unbalanced force causes acceleration, oops, I'm sorry, acceleration in the direction of the unbalanced force. This acceleration is inversely proportional to mass. Every unbalanced force causes acceleration in the direction of the unbalanced force. This acceleration is always, sorry, is inversely proportional to mass. What's, what might inversely proportional mean? I know, I think you talked about these with your sixth grade science teacher and possibly with Mr. O last year. What is, what, first of all, what's proportional mean? Yeah, it means that these things change maybe in the same way. Yeah, if I say that um, the amount of food a baby fly, a maggot, eats is directly proportional to its mass later in life. That means the more food it eats, the more its mass increases, right? Both go up. If I say that the effort you give on, a, on your discussion notes is directly proportional to your grade on the test, well, if your effort goes down, what will the grade on your test do? Down, down, yeah. Meaning that as one thing changes, the other thing changes in the same direction. That's directly proportional. Inversely proportional is the opposite. Inversely proportional is as one goes up, the other goes down and vice versa. Um, let me think of an example of this. Uh, the let's say the the more money you spend on insurance, the less likely you are to be healthy. And that's that's not obviously that's not necessarily true, but it's general. I think the general trend is people who spend more money on insurance usually have poorer health. Um, those are directly, or sorry, those are inversely proportional. More money, less health. Um, and I think that's probably a difference in causation and causation. There we go. Yeah, more money spent, less money in bank account. Mo money, mo problems. That's inversely proportional, right? Mo problems. I mean, I guess that's directly proportional. The worse your life is, the mo you have problems. Um, we don't always reference Biggie Smalls on this YouTube channel, but when we do, we try to make it count. Um, so it's inversely proportional to mass, meaning that for a given force, the more mass the object has, the less it will accelerate. More mass, less acceleration. If I put the same amount of force 
I want to do this in a place that the camera will pick it up. You have to look at the little inset camera. Actually, let me switch it back to not picture in picture. There we go. Um, if I put the same force on Can you see that marker? Oh yeah, there it is. If I put the same force on the marker and the stool with my foot, which one's going to accelerate more? The marker will accelerate more because it has less mass. See, less mass, more acceleration. Inversely proportional. Let's do it. Boot. Boot. And there we go. Um, it was true. The, the one that had the less mass accelerated more. And we oftentimes express this as F net, F sub net equals M A, where both force and acceleration are vector quantities, and so they get a little arrow over their head. For a given net force, the greater the net force gets, the larger the acceleration gets. But the greater the mass gets, the smaller the acceleration gets. That's the, this is the equation. You need to have this equation written down. This is the summary of Newton's second law. Just like the summary, as we said last week, of Newton's first law was inertia. That word inertia, do you remember that? The word inertia. Inertia just tells us that an object at rest stays at rest, and an object in motion stays in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. That's inertia. In the same way, Newton's second law is F net equals MA, or sometimes we just say F equals MA. Does everyone have Newton's second law? I'm sorry, again. Does, it, does anyone not have Newton's second law written down? So, regarding an object, more force means what to the acceleration? More force means more, more change in motion, more acceleration. But more mass means, for a given amount of force, more mass means less acceleration. Those are inversely proportional. Okay? And that's what you found, I hope, Mason, that's what you found in yours, where you had the table with the cart on it, right? And you had a cart and a pulley. The more force you had down here, right? This is, this is a mass. But it's causing a force due to gravity. gravity. Yep. There's a certain force of gravity. The more gravity, the more weight this object has, hopefully you found the more acceleration this had, right? The more this weight, if we had more weight, more acceleration, and therefore more acceleration of the cart. But for a given weight down here, for a given force, if we add more mass to this cart, what will happen to the acceleration? More mass up here, less, less acceleration, because those are inversely proportional. Yeah? Does anyone have any questions about Newton's second law? Newton's first law in one word, what was it? In one word, one kind of fancy Latin word, no. Inertia. Newton's first law, inertia. Newton's second law, as an equation? F sub net equals Yeah, just say F equals MA, but yeah, you're right. Newton's second law as an equation, F equals MA. And now, maybe the most poetic one, Newton's third law. You already know what it is. I want you to tell it to me. I want Cameron to tell it to me. Newton's third law is for every for every object. Anyone? For every action, there we there go. Is action. For every action, action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. That's Newton's third law. Meaning that when you walk across the floor, I can't answer the phone right now. I'm trying to do something. When you walk across the floor, here's you. These are your legs. This is how you walk. <laughs> this is you. As you walk across the floor, what direction do your legs push? Backward. backward. So how come if your legs push backwards, how come you go forward? That doesn't, like if you think about that, friction. that seems like it makes almost no sense, but you're right, friction. You push back. So the force that you're putting on the floor is back. You push back on the floor, and with the same, the same magnitude, but the opposite direction, the floor pushes forward on you. Now listen, do these forces cancel out? We had our marker up here. I'm going to draw this for the fourth time. Oh no, this is the worst one I've ever done. These forces canceled out though. F sub G and F sub F. Those ones canceled out. 
But these ones don't. You're telling me that's correct. These do not cancel out. Otherwise, there wouldn't be any change in motion. But why? Why do these two forces not cancel out? They're the same direct. They're the same magnitude. No, you're not though. It's the same exact force. Be, here's the here's the solution. On what ab object is this working? The floor. On what object is this working? You, your foot. Are they the same object? No. These ones cancel because they're on the same object. These two forces do not cancel because they're on different objects. Don't cancel because they are acting on different objects. Now, um, let me get some scrap paper here. Now, instead of the floor, I'm going to walk on the paper. What has more mass, my, my body or the paper? You shouldn't even have to answer that question. The paper has more mass. Great, that's exactly right. Yeah, look at me. No, try again. What has more mass, me or the paper? You. Me. And so when I, what? Uh-oh, I would slip, right? If the whole floor were covered in sheets of paper, there wouldn't be enough friction. The mass of the paper, the paper would move, not my foot, right? Check it out again. The paper is moving around. It's not pushing my foot forward because the mass on the paper is less. With the floor, what weighs more? Or that's a kind of weird way to think about it. But what has uh, more resistance to change in motion, my foot or the floor itself? The floor itself, obviously. It's hooked in to the walls. I don't know. It's supported by the, by the trusses underneath the floorboards. It itself is bearing up my weight. Right? There's a lot of stuff holding the floor in place more than what's holding my foot in place. And so in that case, when I push back on the floor, it pushes forward on me and I can do this weird lurching walk that if I don't think about it, I can walk like a normal person. Um, but they don't cancel out because they're acting on different objects. Do these ones cancel out? Yes. Yeah, because they are acting on the same object. They're two different forces acting on one object. In the case of me and the floor, it's really one force. It's a force, we call it an interaction. It's not... I'm not saying Newton's wrong, and I'm not saying better, I'm better than Newton, although I'm still alive, and look at him. Um, but I'm saying that this, it's, instead of thinking of it as an action and a reaction, think of it as an interaction. It's one force acting on two different objects in two different ways. Every force does this. Every single force does this. Every single force does this. Every force is actually two hidden purposes. Every monism, philosophers, is a dualism. Every one thing is actually two things. Now... Where it becomes a little bit confusing is think about this. If what's what's providing the force of gravity? Uh, yeah, your girl, Mother Earth, is providing the force of gravity, and she's great big. She's thick, you might even say. <laughs> um, so the force of gravity is provided by planet Earth. The force of gravity is pulling down on this marker. With the, now listen, here's where it gets a little bit tricky. Newton's third law tells us that if the, for, the action is Earth pulls marker, what must the reaction be? Nope. Nope, try again. You know it. You don't even want to say it because it seems so counterintuitive. Earth pulls marker is the action. What's the reaction? Marker pulls Earth. Pulls Earth and it really does. So there's the exact same, exact same force of the exact same thing. It's the exact same force of gravity pulling up. When I drop this marker... It actually technically pulls up on the Earth with the exact same force. Now, why, 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 why doesn't the Earth move? Yeah, exactly. Same force, right? Same force. Same force F sub G. Same force F sub G. Marker's mass, little or big? Little baby mass. What's your girl's mass? The biggest. The biggest thing around. The biggest thing around. So. What will the marker's acceleration be? Remember, these are inversely proportional. So though this will have a great big acceleration, and the, mar or the Earth will only have, oh, yeah, not even little baby, immeasurably small. It's, 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 I mean, literally, you cannot measure it. It is so small. We know it's happening because forces are always in pairs, but we cannot measure the acceleration because the Earth's mass is so much bigger. We could calculate it, but we wouldn't be able to measure it. The number we'd get would be so, so, so small. Now think about it another way. What if, now what if this drawing were to scale? What if a marker this big were coming towards Earth? Well, there would be a measurable force of gravity. Do you see what I mean? Or let me put it a different way. What if instead of a marker, it's the moon? 
the moon's not as big as Earth, but does the moon's gravity affect Earth? Yes. Yeah, that's what the tides come from. So we know this is true. We know that the gravitational force is actually a force pair. Every po force is part of an interaction. Every force is part of an action-reaction pair. Do you have questions about that? For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Every unbalanced force causes a change in motion in the same direction as the unbalanced force. And an object at rest tends to stay at rest, and an object in motion tends to stay in motion unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Those are Newton's laws. There are three of them. You have to have them memorized. In one word, what's his first law? Inertia. In one equation, what's the second law? And fill in the sentence frame for, for um, Newton's third law. Every force is part of a force pair. Pair. All forces come in twos. Ah. 